did you know you can get way more precise sky selection masks using a simple trick. Let me demonstrate this while editing this image. As always you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video and now let's begin. So that is the image we will be working on and as always before we start working on some masks we want to get the basic adjustments right. So if you're here just for the tutorial check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to the interesting part. For the basic adjustments we want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard just to get a little more neutral image and then I do want to change the white balance right away using the trick I showed you a few videos ago. So we are just aligning those three peaks up there in the histogram. I'm going to push the temperature slider for that. And right about here we have a perfect white balance. Now the image is quite hazy. I want to fix that. So let me first bring up the exposure making everything slightly brighter. I also want to bring up the whites just to stretch the histogram a little bit introducing more contrast. And at the same time to counter the hazy atmosphere I'm going to bring down the shadows further improving the contrast this way. And we can also bring down the blacks for the same effect. I'm not going to drop the blacks too much because we will further improve the shadows later on. So I'm just going to drop them slightly not to end up with underexposure. Still the image looks a bit too hazy to me so I want to change that by bringing up the dehaze. And I'm also going to introduce some clarity and some texture. Perfect and of course we want this image to be well saturated so let's bring up the vibrance. Okay that's it for the basic adjustments. The image looks quite a bit better but it's still rather boring. So we can change that by applying a bunch of masks. And I first want to work on the sky and here is where this trick will come into play. To change the sky we are going to create a new sky mask by clicking this button right here. The problem with this AI mask is sometimes with finer details like those tree branches it doesn't properly separate the sky from the landscape in the foreground. This is super annoying since at first it doesn't seem we can change that. However, there is a super neat trick. All we need to do is to click on subtract and here we are doing something that doesn't make sense. But we want to subtract another select sky mask just like this. And doing this subtraction we will end up with the tree branches selected as you can see with the help of the overlay. Now to get back the sky we are going to that subtraction mask, click on those three dots and choose invert. This will give us the sky selection back minus those tree branches of the tree. Now this will improve the sky mask a lot but this does not work perfectly so just keep that in mind. However knowing this we can get a way more precise sky masks. And at this point I want to shout out Signature Edits because I first saw this method used in one of his videos. I'm going to link it below because he is going into way more detail than I will do. Now that we have set up this sky selection what I want to do is to make the sky a little darker. And in fact I only want to make the top part of the sky darker because right here we have some very nice highlights which I want to keep. So I'm going to subtract another mask, this time I'm going to choose a linear gradient and I'm just taking away the highlights from the sky selection mask. So I think something like this looks pretty nice and with this mask setup I'm going to introduce a lot more drama by bringing down the exposure. Just like this, we could push it some more by bringing up the contrast. Okay that looks great. Of course we can tweak this guy some more so let's add another mask. I'm going to use a simple linear gradient and with this linear gradient I'm just kind of targeting the very top part of the sky and again I just want to bring down the exposure making the very top part even darker just like this. If you're wondering why I didn't lower the exposure more using just the one mask to get a darker sky is I want to have a more natural gradient from the brighter areas 
to the dark areas on top. So I'm just stacking a few masks over each other to get a more natural effect. Actually, let's bring that linear gradient down a little. I really only want to target the very top part for that. And at this point, let me create another sky selection mask. And let's one more time apply that little trick from before. Subtract, select sky, and then we want to invert this. Again, I am going to subtract the highlights from the foreground, just like this. And what I want to do with this mask is to bring out those structures in the clouds a little more. I'm doing this by adding a lot of clarity. This will help bring those structures out quite a bit, but it will also introduce some kind of noise, I guess. So to counter that problem, I am going to drop the texture. Now doing this, it will affect the finer tree branches up there. As I said before, this sky selection trick is not working perfectly. So be really, really careful bringing down the texture because this will make the tree branches look weird. So what I want to do next is to also work on the foreground. I'm going to use another linear gradient for that. And I'm just roughly covering most of the foreground. And what I want to do here is to also just darken the area. So I'm bringing down the exposure right about here. Wonderful. Now the image is starting to look way more awesome, but we can of course enhance it some more. I want to apply some special effects. Let me create a radial gradient. And I'm creating a very, very wide one, but I'm also making it rather thin. And I'm going to place it in a way that it's overlapping the foreground and the sky at the same time, just like this. Uh, let's maybe make it a little bigger. And what I want to do with this radial gradient is to add a bit of glow spilling over the hill in the background. I'm doing this by bringing up the blacks very, very carefully here. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. This works quite nice on this image. And then I want to introduce some color. So let's expand the color tab and I'm going to bring up the temperature. Just like this. This way we get some very cool golden hour light coming in from behind the hill. Now that's not the only radial gradient I want to add in this fashion. In fact, let me click on add and choose another radial gradient. And I'm going to create another one right next to the first radial gradient like this. I'm making sure it's overlapping the hill and the sky at the same time. And this way I just want to cover that top of the hill with a little bit of glow. Just like this, wonderful. I do think we can do this on the other side as well. So let me create another radial gradient. And I'm just going to create one like this. Again, overlapping the sky and the landscape. And let's use one more. Okay, so on the right side, this looks quite nice. But on the left side, it does look a little bit weird. That's because we are lacking some brightness in the sky on this side. So what I want to do, let's create a new sky selection. Again, I'm going to apply this little trick, go to subtract, choose select sky and invert this mask. Then I'm going to hover over this mask, click on those three dots, click intersect mask with and choose a radial gradient. Now I will be covering pretty much all the horizon level on the left side. And I'm also going to overlap the trees a little bit. And what I want to do inside here is I want to just bring up the exposure, making this part of the sky brighter. So the glowing area from before makes sense here. I also want to introduce some more whites again for some more brightness. And let's bring up the temperature a notch. And while we're at it, we can also bring up the saturation. That looks great. Now the glow effect does look much more natural thanks to the brighter sky. I do want to go back to that glow effect mask and add another radial gradient, just a very tiny one right behind those trees. Maybe let's add one more right in here. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. We can take a look at the original raw file and you can see we do have a much different image now. 
looks so much better. Of course, we are not done yet. Now let's do a little bit of color grading. Let's start in the color mixer. And I do want to start in the luminance tab. I do want to bring down the orange luminance and the yellow luminance just to prevent any kind of overexposure in this bright area. Then I want to head over into the saturation tab and bring up orange, bring down yellow. I uh, also want to bring down the green tones because of that hill in the foreground. And I guess I want to bring up the blue saturation to make the sky a little more interesting. And I guess that's it for the color mixer part. Now we can enhance the colors more in the color grading panel for some split toning. Let's start with the highlights and we want to make them warmer. So let's set up the hue. Right about here looks good to me. And of course we want to bring up the saturation to get a visible effect out of this. I'm going to raise it quite a bit because I like the look of it. And now let's head into the midtones. I want to introduce some more color balance by adding a cold hue to the midtones and just slightly bring up the saturation here. Wonderful. Let's head down into the calibration tab. And here, what I want to do is, as always, I'm just playing around with the blue primary hue, bringing it down and raise the saturation to make this image more colorful. All right, this looks really, really good. Now, the last thing we can do is to go into the details tab and apply some sharpening. So I'm always going to drop the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key, and then increase the amount of sharpening. Done. We can also get rid of a few sensor spots real quick. So click on that healing tool and I'm going to choose the heal brush. And then let's just get rid of a few of those sensor spots. You can even click on visualize sensor spots to be safe. But this is looking really, really clean. Okay, down here is another thing I want to remove. I want to try the content aware remove tool. Just brushing over this thing and I hope Lightroom will fix that. It does. That's great. So that is the finished image. I hope the little masking hack will be helpful for your future photos. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.